government and workers' representatives' bodies to meet again next week. Details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for Friday, December 7th, I am Rikisha St. Louis. The Pension Engagement Committee and the public sector trade unions and staff associations have agreed to meet again next week to continue discussions on the subject of pension. However, no date has been agreed upon. The unions are also expected to submit proposals for government's consideration. At their meeting of November 27th, both the government and the workers' representative bodies recommitted themselves to finding an amicable solution to the issue. It was also agreed that there will be no industrial action while the negotiations are ongoing. Prime Minister and Minister for Finance Dr. The Right Honourable Keith Mitchell is alarmed and saddened by an attack on the hard-working and patriotic public servants of the Ministry of Finance by Senator and Head of the Trades Union Council Mr. Andre Lewis. In his budget debate presentation in the Upper House, Senator Lewis suggested that the figures presented by the Ministry of Finance was somehow not a true reflection to guide the government and unions negotiations over gratuity payments. In commenting on Mr. Lewis's remarks, Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell said it was irresponsible, unfair, baseless and inflammatory and that Senator Lewis showed utter disregard for the diligent staff of the ministry who are also represented by the trade union movement and are therefore constituents of the same trade union leader who is attacking the ethics. He says the suggestion therefore that the staff of finance was not forthright with the information and advice presented to the pension engagement committee is wholly unfortunate and the finance minister wishes to register his disappointment over the trade union leader's callous disregard regard for his own workers, who Dr. Mitchell describes as among the best workers in the public service, consistently going above and beyond their remit. Government will introduce a new category of wardens to assist in the enforcement of policing the 2018 Litter Act. The amendment to the 2018 Act was brought before the Upper House on Thursday by Senator the Honorable Dr. Winston Garway to include the traffic wardens. The abatement of Litter Act enforces penalties to ensure the promotion of a clean and healthy environment. Senator Galway explained that three categories of workers are currently responsible for policing the act. They are the police, public health inspection officers, and forestry officers. He said even though the bill was passed back in 2016 and has not been enforced, a lot of work has been done. The Abatement of Litter Act seeks to introduce or to put in place a cadre of persons who will be responsible for, as it were, policing the city, your towns, wherever, within Grenada, Carrick, and Peter Martinique, to ensure that our people dispose of litter properly. And they're given the responsibility to, to charge the fixed penalties, as you say, a ticketing system towards ensuring that our citizens comply with the act. According to Senator Galway, the inclusion of the traffic wardens is a major boost for environmental protection. We could see the, the value of giving such powers to the traffic wardens who have been there already, will be assisting with packing and the regulating and controlling of the traffic, the flow of traffic. So they will be on the ground already. And we're thinking, it's our belief, that seeing that they are there, that additional duty to assist citizens to comply with the, the Litter Act will be an easy fit. And in so doing, Mr. President, I want to introduce today that that power is given to the traffic wardens. Leader of Government Business in the Senate, Senator Simon Steele, gave support to the amendment. It is a highly efficient way um, of, of being able to combine services of traffic wardens who are out in town in, uh, in 
generally urbanized areas. And if knowing that a lot of the litter that is generated is also from motorists is in those same areas, then there is a commonality in terms of, um, in terms of function. And this is seen as an important step forward and an important enabler for us to, um, to, to start the enforcement of this. This is the National Report. We'll have more news after the break. Finally, beekeepers are encouraged to join forces to take advantage of opportunities that may not benefit an individual, but everyone involved in beekeeping. That's encouragement from the Ministry of Agriculture and Lands. Jerry Malcolm tells us some of the plans in place for the Grenada Association of Beekeepers. The Ministry of Agriculture convened the meeting to resuscitate the now inoperative gap. The Grenada Association of Beekeepers for a more unified approach to beekeeping for greater collective benefits. Opportunities are available for the beekeepers, but individually not every one of them can access to them. So having a stronger organization means that they can fully take advantage of all of these opportunities that are outside them to benefit not only the beekeeper, but the The ministry's recommendations were welcomed by the beekeepers. I have had markets opened up to me in Canada, the U.S., Barbados, I had to let it go mm -hmm. because I can't supply it. So we are not competitors, just a matter of working together. Mm -hmm. Willing to volunteer in every way possible to help bring that back to I'm glad that we're talking about moving forward together because um, there's lots of things we can do as an association. Um, I would hope at the next meeting, right, we'll be prepared to um, have an election of a new executive body, right? Whenever that meeting is held, because we already have that, it's just a matter of contacting these people and say, look, we are ready to, to move forward with the association. Honey production is just one aspect of the ministry's interest in beekeeping. Apiculture officer Quisi Williams says they're equally interested in the contribution of bees to the wider agricultural sector, often overlooked. The contribution that the bees make to our economy is great, greater than what we more realize because they're responsible for one third of the world's food. So imagine if we had no bees in Guinea, a lot of the crops and things like which is pollinated by wind and water, it would take a long time to be able to, to reach maturity that they can sell. But with bees now, it helps speed up the, the process and therefore it makes it even greater for our farmers and then we will have a faster turnover. The beekeepers have agreed to reconvene early in the new year to get Gab buzzing once again. <laughs> That story just ended the national report for today, Friday, December 7th. Let's recap the top story. Government and workers' representatives' bodies to meet again next week. On behalf of all those who made this newscast possible, I am Rakesha St. Louis saying thank you for joining us. Until next time. <laughs>